You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling Oklahoma stories through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof. Let's get into today's episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode down at the first national center today um just had an amazing tour from amanda huge shout out to her it was um i learned a lot i know a lot now a lot that i didn't before so thanks for amanda for giving me a tour but in front of me i have mr gary brooks um to, i mean man behind the building but i guess man in front of the building and there are a lot of people behind you that you've corralled together to make this what seven year journey at, into reality yeah six and a half years september of 2015 was <clears throat> when had the idea and yeah. thought we could put together a team and right and here went, we are went to the mayor and Jim Couch the city manager at the time and said I got a crazy idea the building was in receivership I knew the receiver and he told me he could get me a federal judge's title and basically wipe everybody out and clean it up so yeah. that's how it started so we're going to get to all that, but I want to, I want to build your kind of the context first and, and tell us a little bit about kind of you and your background and your Oklahoma story. Um, for people listening, kind of take us through, I guess, for, you know, kind of how you get, you know, where you grow up and then what gets you into architecture, building, that stuff, and then we'll obviously get to this. It's not very interesting, so I'll move <laughs> quick. Uh, Raised in Ponca City, Oklahoma, graduated yeah. Ponca City High School in 1980, came to Oklahoma Christian at Edmond in 1980, was going to be an accountant, uh, wasn't any good at it, uh, didn't enjoy it, went yeah. ahead and got my degree in it, and uh, started selling cars for Bob Moore, uh, downtown Oklahoma City in 1985, yeah. got into commercial real estate in 1987, 88. Uh, wasn't a great time to try to be peddling sure. real estate. Yeah. Shortly after the crash, I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Met Mark Beffert, who was already a pretty up and coming guy at that time. He and I were the same age, hit it off, became best friends. And yeah. we started Beffert Brooks in uh, early 90s, I guess, mid 90s. And just grew it, grew it from there. And yeah. one day, saw a demographic birth chart from 1900 and thought probably gonna need a lot of apartments here pretty quick so i got an apartment development uh, mark and uh, partner roy oliver were starting to buy some office buildings okay. and so i kind of went the apartment way and started doing apartment development in 2005 six no money Cut my teeth doing apartment development, suburban type stuff, easy, yeah. and got into some pretty more complicated apartment wraps downtown. Had some good success with that, built a little bit of a credibility, mm -hmm. and walked in this building September of 2015 and had an idea. Said, I want it. Said, I want to take it on. It's... Um, it wasn't that confident. Well, yeah. Trust me. But <laughs> the kind of... The thing, like, the, the time periods that you just mentioned, there's obviously a lot of uncertainty going on in those time periods with Oklahoma City, real estate, financial markets, all that kind of stuff. But there's also a lot of opportunity there as well, right? And then it kind of, you know, you mentioned Mark as well. You, you kind of, you, you both of you have had a huge impact on this city. Um, I, I, <coughs> people probably don't really know that. Yeah, I would say the city's have. had a lot more impact on us than we've well, had yeah. on the city. but. Yeah. Look, I don't know any other market. I, yeah. I, I haven't played in any other markets. Uh, Oklahoma City has done so well that it makes all of us look smarter than we are. I mean, <laughs> I warned younger guys in the business, I go, look, you're going to think you're really smart, and you're yeah. you're not near as smart as you think you are. You you can answer a phone and, and chase deals. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm undervaluing developers just a little, but... This market has been, I think, for, for many years, I, it was consistent. Mm -hmm. And if you're a developer and you're in a market that's consistent, 
I don't care if it's at three or four percent growth. Consistency is great. Yeah. And about six, seven years ago, you know, I'm like a lot of other people. I'm like, hey, this place is about to blow up. I mean, maps maps changed the game. The thunder changed the game. I mean, you you that changed the city. And so I just simply saw a tide that's rising. I didn't contribute to it, yeah. and I just said, I don't. I'm not sure it's going to stop. Right. And every year it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, I'm a pretty good cheerleader for Oklahoma City. I mean, I, I'm not so sure if this city doesn't become one of the top two or three cities mm -hmm. looked at for growth and opportunity in the country in the next five years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, the stats definitely speak to that because, I mean, you got, you know, so much development still continuing and coming in. And, you know, I think people are starting to realize it. Um, the locals probably don't want people to realize it because they want to keep the city for themselves. But some uh, of them, you know, sometimes that happens. Businesses is good. Right? I get it. I mean, yeah, you, you fall into comfort zones, and that's understandable. Yeah, but you also want to be a place where people want to come and grow and can flourish, mm -hmm. and their families can succeed, and and you got a cost of living that's that's at least reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've got a lot of things that need to be solved here, but yeah. I, I wouldn't live anywhere else. Yeah, growing up, then when you when you went to Oklahoma Christian. Did you, did you kind of have plans because of kind of what the state that I say, the state, the, the kind of market at the time in Oklahoma City at that time, do you think I want to go somewhere else? Because a lot of people do that, right? A lot of people go somewhere else and then they come yeah. back, right? They realize what they've missed and they come back or they have a family here. Did you go anywhere else before going no, into the college? Well, I, I had no plan, Mike. Yeah? <laughs> I was just surviving. <laughs> yeah, my funny story on that, Beffert and I were actually, we were, we were young. We we're, were both at a meeting. And it's some you know, pretty, uh, it was pretty significant meeting. I can't remember why we were there. And one of the, the people made a comment, said, yeah, all of our smart young people, once they get out of college, they leave. And Beffer looked at me like, oh, we're obviously don't qualify as smart young guys because we stayed. So we stayed, no, yeah. we, I, I never considered moving anywhere else. It's just yeah. never, I didn't have that much of a plan. So, right. So what and I, I met my wife. 39 years ago, so I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, I mean, I, sh I share that with you too, because I mean, I, I wouldn't be going anywhere else after I met my wife too. It's, uh, I don't know, you, when you find someone, you find someone, right? And you think, this Look, is it. I, and, I, I'm not sure I'd fit anywhere else. Yeah. This is Oklahoma City. It's, this is where I'm comfortable. I have, I have no desire. Yeah. So fast forward then, 2015, you guys walk in here, what is, I guess, who, what's the conversation that gets you in the building to start? You said you knew people. Yeah, I, I well, no, after I was in the building and had the crazy idea, um, I went and met with some you know, significant city leaders that mm -hmm. I at least knew had a relationship with and said, look, I, I've got an idea. And, you know, they're all like, that's crazy. We'll support you if you think you can, but nobody's been able to pull it off. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just been considered an impossible task. I, I believe that there was a window. Of course, it's easy to say seven years later, sure. looking back. Right. Somebody can say, yeah, you know, he knew all along. I, I didn't know anything, but the building needed to be saved. It yeah. probably needed to be a local person just to understand the significance. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was not the most qualified person in town. There were plenty of people that had done these kind of things. I hadn't. Uh, but I was kind of the only one that was crazy enough to think, hey, this might be a good time. The city, you had the right leadership in place, both at City Hall. You had great leadership in the business community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just became a rallying voice, I think, just to get enough people involved yeah of course you know, this first national doesn't happen without a conversation with charlie nicholas you know my right. partner down in Louisville, texas i mean this building would have crushed me 10 times over but you know charlie bought into my vision and yeah said hey uh, i'm in I, I i'm i'm for you and has stayed with me the whole time i mean he's the reason it happened you know, yeah. and all the other people that really got behind it and caught the vision to that point, there's a, there's a really good lesson there that, you know, when you, when you, it's having a lot of self-belief, right? You know, when you talk about your vision and, and you don't just come in here and say, oh, I, yeah, this is it. I, this is my idea. 
you know, you you got to come in here with some confidence, right? With some, I'm going to take this on, and I'm gonna, this is the city needs this, and I'm going to do this for the city and for the people of the city. And it's, I can, can I can you talk a little bit about kind of that? I guess that process of you know, wh when you're a developer, you know, you, you've developed these buildings, right? And they might be apartments, and they might be they might, might look like some other stuff or uh, as everybody else, but. When you do something like this, this is a, this is as an artist would say, it's a statement piece, right? I and mean, I don't, I, I get the kind of side of you. I don't think you see it as a statement piece because just the short time we've sat together, I don't get the sense that you really like. You don't want to tell you. You not like look at me. Look at what I've done, right? I don't get that sense from you. But I want to kind of dive into like that kind of self confidence and belief and and my vision. Kind of where does that come from? Hmm, I've had never been asked that question. That's good. Uh, you're obviously a professional. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> sometimes taking on something like this just means that somebody's got to be the cheerleader. Mm -hmm. I mean, all I really did was say yes, and I just kept pushing. Yeah. And I just kept saying yes, and people kept saying, you're crazy. And I go, yeah, maybe, but this needs to be done. And what I, what I think I did well, besides just putting together a great team, was I just kept pushing. I, I felt like, and I, I can articulate it now, I couldn't have six years ago. I would have had no clue how to articulate this. Mm -hmm. But what I think I knew instinctively was, if you get enough people in Oklahoma City thinking this could happen, they'll literally carry you. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what happened. I mean, once the... Once enough people were like, okay, he's serious. And early on, it was like, yeah, he's serious, but he's going to fail, which was a logical thought. Sure. I mean, <laughs> got a friend called me one day, and he said, hey, you know everybody in the town's thinking you're going to fail. I go, well, yeah, I would too. <laughs> right. I'm not offended by it at all. Uh, but once people were like, okay, he's serious. And then you get you know, an a engine like Charlie Nicholas, who's well-known in this region and even mm -hmm. around the country, you get him behind it, and all of a sudden people are like, all right, that, that's a serious uh, ownership group mm -hmm. that's able to step in with a lot of power and force and, and history. And now all of a sudden they're like, hmm. And then I bring in any construction who, you know, they brought powerhouses in and people kept going, all right, maybe yeah. this you know, little guy from Oklahoma City is going to actually put together a group that can pull this off. Right. Then 106 lenders turned us down, and COVID hit, and uh, <laughs> there were some challenges. Let's just say it was a challenge. But I, I really think my main job was just to keep telling people, we're going to do this, yeah. no matter what they said. Yeah, and, and like I said, one domino falls, and then the other falls, and then it takes a while for the next one to fall but you keep pushing and, and before you know it you're, you are fully committed you're in on this and, and it doesn't matter how long it takes this could have taken you 10 years it didn't matter it was going to happen yeah I, I think so now that's easy for me to say now yeah but you know looking back at the challenges I mean if, if Prime Bank and Cross First hadn't have jumped on early you wouldn't have ever got off the ground yeah. you know if Tinker Federal Credit Union hadn't have agreed to step up and see the vision. They caught it, and when nobody else did, uh, you wouldn't have made it. Yeah. And, you know, HUD comes in, and, and the city steps up with significant funds. Uh, you know, our tax credit people. You've got state historic tax credits. You've got, you just got a lot of, uh, a lot of people had to say yes. That didn't happen in 12 months. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that kind of just fascinates me is, and like you said, there's so many people said no. But, it, I mean, the story, you could replicate this story in any business, right? It's just kind of like that entrepreneur's story of, like, I'm going to, I want, I have a vision. I want to do this. I'm going to get enough people together to do it, and we're just going to keep going until it's till, till we can do this. And there are, of course, there are examples where people have just said, no, you're out of your mind. This is never going to work. And some people spend their life trying to make things work. And they sadly, they don't. But they have something that, that makes them tick. They have something, that reason that they get out of bed in the morning. And that reason for the last six, seven years and before that was this for you. But I, there's, there's things that happen every day, right? They're like, okay, we've had a kick in the, kick in the nuts here. Or we've had a breakthrough. And COVID obviously was one of those kicks. 
and the, you know 106 and are saying no was a, was multiple kicks but you know we're sat in the old conference room today which is one of the suites now <laughs> um you know and like i said had a great tour from amanda and you walk into that building and you see you know the amazing artwork and and the the stuff that's been restored and I cannot wait to go down to that bar downstairs and kind of have a few cocktails because that place is going to be going to be popping. But you know, there's you you could write books and movies about this, right? About the last six years of all the things that have happened. We could sit down for ten hours telling stories, but easily. Yeah. Well, for me, kind of the stuff I'm interested in is like the stuff that people probably will kind of sadly, I think people might look past is the history of this building. And downstairs on the walkway down through the Broadway, you have some great murals and, and pictures of history. What was your kind of first experience or first memory of this building historically? Did you know anything about it before? I mean, other than the fact that it was used to be a bank? Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't have a whole lot of thoughts mm -hmm. about the building. I was an office broker in the 80s and 90s, and you're looking for office space that people actually want. Right. And it wasn't First National. Mm -hmm. It didn't. It wasn't under ownership for a long time that really supported a lot of tenant improvements. The building wasn't, it really didn't fit a lot of tenants looking for mm -hmm. you know, quality office space. So I was much more interested in Leadership Square, and <laughs> the, the cool buildings, yeah. which is now pretty ironic and somewhat embarrassing to say, you know, I just didn't have a whole lot of appeal. Mm -hmm. I, it did not, if you'd have told me 20 years ago, I would have had the idea and put the team together, I'd have laughed at you. I mean, that's just, who would want to do that? Yeah. So I wasn't a history person. I, I, I didn't really care about it. And, you know, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, won't, I won't take you down you know, a, a tangent, but, uh, you know, God gave me a vision, and I said yeah. yes, and he performed hundreds of miracles along the way and here we are yeah what well, leads to you getting that vision do you do you travel a lot do you take th things from all over different cities no, all over countries or? i travel very little <laughs> <laughs> did you before this yeah is a beach or yeah. like I, I didn't i i you know i i think maybe what makes the story somewhat interesting is i was i'm not the prototype mm -hmm to do something like this and people are like it's one of the reasons rightfully so people are like he can't do this i mean yeah. it, it just wasn't it wasn't my style yeah. it wasn't something that i ever thought about ever dreamed about never had the idea yeah there's some cool things that around that you guys have kept and, and amanda told me a story about the kind of the original elevator that was found <laughs> right and and this the letters that have been found and that you know and can you touch on some of the stuff that you found through discovery or, and also things that kind of people brought to you as well, who used to, used to work here and just kind of like the cool stuff that, you know, people might not really know about unless they ask a question. You can take on a project like this. We did a lot of case studies around the country. So we got to see a lot of similar type sure. projects. And a few of them, you just walk away going, wow, they, they crushed it. You know, the palace in San Francisco, I mean, <laughs> it's fantastic. And a lot of them, you walk away and go, man, they could have done so much better. And it's economics, I get it, sure. I realize. Uh, I felt like you've got one shot at First National. Mm -hmm. You don't have 10 of these in Oklahoma City. you got one. And... The city and my partners trusted me to at least put something out there right. that we would all be proud of. And I wanted people to walk in and go, okay, I didn't expect it. I knew it's fantastic. I mean, it was fantastic before we started. Right. <laughs> the building was great before we ever touched it. Yeah. It was in incredible disrepair, but it still was a fantastic building. You got one shot. And you either reach as high as you can and reach for excellence and, and crush it, or forever you're going to look back and go, yeah, it's nice, but we could have done better. And again, I, had I not had a partner you know, with Charlie and the ownership team and any construction and the other ADG and Flickmar, the people behind us, you know, 
yeah, the bar in the Great Hall was my idea, but it, my vision wasn't that. <laughs> you know, people go, yeah, the bar's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. I go, yeah, wasn't what I would have built. You know, my vision wasn't anywhere close to that. But you put a vision out, you hire smart people and yeah. great people to build it, and you got an ownership group willing to support it, and all of a sudden you look up and you go, that's unbelievable. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've walked it hundreds of times, and I still go, that's really incredible. Yeah, It's just a testament to you know, just people saying, okay, this is a crazy idea. Let's do it really well. Mm-hmm. Because you want to do it so well, I didn't want to, I wanted to respect the building as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, not being a history person, I ended up studying a lot about the Johnson brothers and the Vos family and the early days of the bank and became really fascinated with it. And at one point, it sounds a little odd, but I, I walked from the bank to Frank Johnson's old house at 15th and Walker because he used to walk to and from the work every day right. just to try to get a sense of what was in his mind. Because I mean, I'm sure everybody was 1930 going, you guys are crazy. Yeah. But it really, uh, I really wanted to respect the building. You know, they did such an incredible job. Yeah, I mean, You couldn't have done this today. And I really wanted to respect that. The elevator, we looked for a year for pictures of the original cab, couldn't find anything. And I just knew that if you could find the original cab and were willing to commit to it, that would be cool. Yeah. It's just one of those features that nobody would think about till you did it. Yeah. And then they get in the cab and go, that's cool. Yeah. We found an original cab in the basement that was welded shut. 15 years broke into it and yeah. there it was sitting right there with the chair for the operator still in it and <laughs> I said we got to replicate it yeah. took two years and a company were able to laser the whole thing and replicate those elevators and again a, an ownership group and a design team and a contractor that's like okay that's a that's a crazy idea we'll yeah. do it <laughs> Yeah, I, and that I mean, there's there's many more, right? You have kind of the squirrels on on the bank vault, the the owls, and all the other animals that are in the artwork on the ceilings. You have the murals, the four murals that are downstairs. Mm. I mean, like you said, you, you just want to preserve it or just you know bring it back to life. This 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 building has a character, and the last thing you want to do is whitewash the walls and be like, yeah, we'll just take the outside. Everything inside is going to be brand new, right? When you first get into it, it was a job. Mm-hmm. We have a job to do. At some point, it becomes a responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> and you realize, we have to do this well. Mm-hmm. You can't be in this building and, and for, you know, disrespect her by not preserving right. the murals. I mean, you have no choice. You have to do this. <laughs> yeah. You're never going to do it again. If you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Uh-huh. I'm not going to bring somebody in here three years after hotels open and set up scaffolding. That's yeah. not an option. So I think it's just a commitment to the yeah. the initial vision. And are you a superstitious person? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Part of me is like old buildings have character and whether we believe in buildings giving you karma back or not. But some of the things that came to mind then was like, you know, if you're not, you don't, you don't do it right. This building's gonna bite you in the ass somewhere. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't have that. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's cool is the barber shop downstairs, yeah. and kind of like that development that's gonna happen. You have got a, you know the boot company coming in. You got the restaurant that's gonna be open, and I I ran past that restaurant running the marathon. I was like, that's new. What is that? Uh, and now I understand. I just get to see the the entrance side of it from from First National and. It's exciting going to see that when it's open and everything's bustling down there. But that barbershop's got some unique quirks to it too, right? Yeah, the barbershop was on the 14th floor. I never went there to get my hair cut, but a lot of people did. It was very well known. A lot of Oklahoma City powerful people went yeah. there regularly. Uh, it had a some old-timers started telling me some history of of what happened in that barbershop and who who actually went there and you yeah. know it's Dean McGee and Mr. Gaylord and just on and on and 
it was just one of those things. It's like, look, you got one shot. Yeah. Don't 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 neglect the history of the building and the history of the city Mm -hmm. and people that are significant that helped build it. All I did was had an idea. Hey, let's recreate it. Put it on the first floor, reopen it, yeah. redo the original barber chairs. And it ended up being an idea that people kind of took and thought, hey, that's fun. Right. And, uh, I don't know how that plays out, but it's pretty It's pretty cool. Yeah. When you dive into hearing those stories and finding out who was in those chairs and, and the, maybe the deals that were done and the friendships that were made, and then now we get to know, you know what those gentlemen did. But at the time, it was an idea and sat in a barber chair getting my hair cut or my shoes shined. It's part of the history. Yeah. And you can either ignore it or you embrace it. And someone walks in here and says, I sat in that chair mm. by Mr. Gaylord and talked about Tinker Air Force Base coming. I don't know. I, I, I yeah. wasn't there. I, I don't know. But you don't want to miss those opportunities right. to respect the history mm-hmm. is it were you into history growing up or was it no, just after that nothing about it no so history. this is really kind of sparked yeah. your my love wife for thought city. it was hilarious yeah, yeah. She's like, <laughs> you know nothing about history <laughs> <laughs> well, i know yeah that's what makes the whole thing a little ironic. Like it, like, yeah. yeah but you know a lot about this building now which is all you need to know i got Obsessed with it, yeah. Yeah. You know, my best friend told me, said early on, he said, just don't get emotional about it. Yeah. And I, I looked at him, I said, emotion may be the only thing that How carries can you, you through. Not, right? Yeah. I mean, that may be all you have some days. Yeah. It's just you wake up and you go, I have no clue what how we're going to do this, but you have no choice but to keep moving. Yeah. Did Mark think you were nuts? Y- yeah. I don't <laughs> want to get him in trouble. But, well, look, I. I most everybody thought that, yeah. and that, that was that was the right response. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I banker number probably sixty five. You know, he's like, you know, no, and I, it finally hit me about you know, <laughs> in that somewhere in that, I looked at him. I go, it's not that you don't think the building can't be done. You just don't think I can do it. And that was like this revelation of like, oh my gosh. <laughs> So he kind of like smiled. I go, I get it. I mean, yeah. I, but you just persevere. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many stories of, of that and, and I love it because, you know, like you said, if you, like I said earlier, if you just said 20 years ago, you know, you'd be doing this. You're like, you're out of your mind. There's no way you're just talking about the wrong guy. Yeah. It all had to come together. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, the city, mm-hmm. you know, these lenders, Charlie, the, the construction team. I mean, there were people that spent five years of their life in this building. Right. Away from their families all week long. And you know, we'd go home to Dallas on the weekend, maybe, mm-hmm. and come back and work in this building with a hard hat for four years with no heat and air. Yeah. It was brutal. The, 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 the hundreds of people absolutely brutal I, I can't even begin to describe the challenge I, I it's it's embarrassing for me you know I, I'm the one people want to talk to but I'm like yeah, you know I'm, mm-hmm. I could line you up 500 people that worked harder than I did I mean they just they killed themselves yeah. and I think even even the workers get in here and it gets you the building captures you it, it it does something to you where it's just not a job anymore right I asked, so Amanda gave me a story, and I asked her kind of her story and kind of how she got involved. And she's like, well, I came here to open the Omni, and then I walked in here and fell in love. And I was like, explain. She's like, well, when you come up those elevator stairs, like, and she said, um, she said, she set a goal to be, she wants to be a part of the 100-year party, which is in 31, right? Yeah. She's like, that's my goal. So she better like, be here a lot like, longer than 1931. Yeah. I, so, yeah, I will not like, let her leave. She so. was she was one of our first staff hires, and yeah, yeah, I, I went after her pretty hard. We we needed expertise. I, As the locations go, you're right in the middle of Oklahoma yeah. City, right? Living downtown in Oklahoma City is so much fun. I can't even begin to tell you. It's absolutely incredible, and only going to get better. Yeah. I mean, you got the Marriott Gardens being redone. It's going to be opening soon. That tube and it, it's it's a it's a 
wonderful experience that I wasn't expecting. Yeah. What does your family think of kind of just how this experience has gone the last six, seven years? Oh. Your wife must be a saint. <laughs> yeah, my wife's amazing. Well, my wife's Mark Beffert's CFO, so she's in the business. Okay, you know, yeah. She, she leaves him and comes home to me, so she understands it. Yeah. She, she knew. I, I mean, the only story I'll tell on her, she, I don't have permission to do anything, but about halfway through due diligence, uh, we were sitting in the backyard, and I told her, I said, look, we gotta, we got to make a call. Mm-hmm. I mean, we could still walk away. You know, I can pay Charlie back his his part of the money, and he won't kill me. Yeah, and we could walk away. You need to, I, you need to make that call. If if, if, if you're worried, now's the time because yeah. once we go, we go. And she thought about it, and she said, "You know, let's do it." Yeah, and yeah, w- without her, I, I wouldn't have. Yeah, I mean. You'd, yeah, you got that I'll support. I mean, no, it's it's you know, it's I mean, Batman and Robin. You've got that support. You know, the last thing that you want going into something like this is not to have the support of your significant yeah. other, because that doubts you. And the last thing you need when you take on any project is doubt. So it that is. was a special moment. <laughs> the danger is though, you, you, this building doesn't define me. It doesn't define her. It doesn't uh-huh. define us. I mean, yeah, it's, it's something we did. I think it's a significant thing for the city. Sure, uh, but. You know, you, you, Projects can't define you. Right. Yeah. Well, how long was that due diligence period? Uh, Charlie and I signed the contract January 11th of 2016. We closed January the 11th of 2017. 365 days. Wow. Of due diligence. That's a that's a long. Well, you, know, you had to hire engineers. Sure. You had to, you yeah. Had to, you had to touch every stone on the outside of the building. You had to make sure the building was going to work for what you wanted it to do. You didn't want to buy it if you right. find problems. You discover problems that, hey, now it won't work. Yeah. Now you're in trouble. So you take your time, you spend the money, you hire the right people, and you get in here and you make sure that it's going to work. Yeah. The, the irony is it took us longer to buy it than it did to build it. They built the building in 11 and a half months, start to finish. Yeah, that's ironic. <laughs> no, it's, it's unbelievable. It I, is, yeah. I still don't know how they did it. No, not especially back then. It had to be 2,000 people. I don't have a clue. God, you'd love to hear those stories from the people who were behind we had GCs pictures, on the day and stuff. I yeah. haven't ever found anyone that have to be 110. Yeah. Gosh, there's so many. That's the beauty. I mean, we wish the beauty of technology is you just want people to be interviewed during the job or after just to hear their thoughts, right? Because we'd still have those, but hopefully we have written letters and other forms of kind of figuring that out. Um, one of the other things I want to touch on is, I mean, the bank at Vault obviously is a huge statement piece of the building. The door is ma- doors, multiple doors are massive. And the fact that, that you guys have kind of turned that into a really cool area that's that's going to be open a few months, whenever that'll be. But just walking through, we get this with the low ceiling. It, it's got kind of an aura to it, right? You can't walk in there and think, yeah, I don't want to spend time in here. You walk in there and you think, it's time for a drink. I want to have a good time. You <laughs> or know? food. Or well, food. Good, you know, it's, good it's, Mexican menu Yeah, down there. it's just kind of... <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm not sure I've ever had an original idea, so you steal as many good ideas as you yeah. can. And I saw I saw a few in their due diligence. You, 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 the vault was really cut up down there, but when you see that big round D bolt, that mm-hmm. that we we have a document that tells us twenty six thousand pounds that one vault. I can't prove it, but it's yeah. it's massive. Where are you ever going to be able to sit in a cool place and have a meal and a drink and spend time with friends in yeah. front of that? Right. You just it's so rare. I found one, and obviously they're around, but I found one in Cleveland. And it's wintertime. I told my wife, I go, hey, we got to Cleveland. She goes, why? I go, I got to go see a vault. Like, We're going to Cleveland in the winter to see a vault. I go, yeah, I have to go touch this vault. And so you, 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 you go look for these, these places. Uh, even in my wildest dreams, mm-hmm. I did not see that. Right. Obviously, had the idea put it out there, cast the vision, yeah. give it to the team. Fortunately, I wasn't smart enough to think through the complexities of putting two vaults and 250 people in a, or two bars and 250 people in a vault. 
And you're like, what do you mean? Well, there were no holes because it's a vault. Right. And so I've got a 36-inch concrete four and a 24-inch steel concrete ceiling. <laughs> So if you want to put a light in, you're going to drill a hole <laughs> through a 26-inch concrete ceiling. You want to put air conditioning in. You want to yeah. put beer taps in. You want to put plumbing lines and drains. And it took a year and a half just to build the infrastructure. Yeah. But again, it's a testimony to the design team who actually had the creativity to make it 10 times better than I ever saw it, a contractor who could get the right people in there and had yeah. the the wherewithal to go, okay, this is the stupidest idea I've ever seen in my life, right. but we'll do it. We'll pull it off. And an ownership group that said, okay, this could be cool. And it's just incredible. I mean, it's it's going to be one of those spaces that I think will be unique enough that mm -hmm. people are going to want to make sure they come to see it. Yeah. And it, well, and it's to that point, if you travel to Cleveland, like it's going to be that statement piece that people are going to start coming here to see stuff, right? It's bringing people to the city, even if they are designing some way something across the country, maybe around the world, like, you know, by doing this the way you've done it and doing it the right way and preserving it and respecting the building, you know, it it brings people from all over the country just to see it, right? And that that's, that's, that's amazing. Hope. It's a testament to the, the team you guys put together and the work that's been done. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, you, you want your own friends and people in my city to enjoy it, but what I really hoped was that it lets people know, mm -hmm. I mean, we've got something you don't have. <laughs> you could come to this building from New York, Chicago, Miami, LA, it doesn't matter. And you walk in our city and you walk in that building and you're gonna be shocked. Yeah. And my hope is that that at least opens the door for opportunity for all the great business leaders in this city to go, okay, we, we're, why would you not wanna come here? Mm -hmm. you know, back in the 80s and 90s, we, we, we always wonder, why would somebody want to come here? Yeah. And now you've got this, you're the sixth fastest growing city in the country. You know, people from California are moving here so fast, they can't even get enough rental cars. And I want people to walk in and go, why would you not want to live here? Yeah, It's, it's an amazing place. And if you think you're, you know, need to have some special hotel for your friends, eh, we we'll probably got one. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. as good as anything you've got. Yeah, no doubt. It's uh, that sounded a little cocky, but no, it doesn't. It's, <laughs> it's, but you're right though. That's the thing. Like it's 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 fantastic. And like I said, if you just want to come here for the weekend, if you just want to come here for drinks after work, if you want to come here for dinner, um, you know, or if you want to live here, I mean, is it 196? 196, 196, 193, 193 apartments, 146 hotel rooms. Yeah, and it's you know it. I don't know, when people walk in, they see the vast ceiling, they see the scope of it. But then when you mention those numbers, they're like, yeah, we don't think about going up. You know, then, I mean, they might look up, but they don't realize the scope of, you know, over a million square feet in this building. She's pretty big. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finishing up, because I know you've got to get to a call here soon. Um, now that we are, you know, six and a half years in obviously you know there's still a lot to go you've got businesses opening and coming in and people moving in and that's the exciting part but what kind of i mean what do you do now like for you do you just kind of manage stuff or what, what's i mean you've done six and a half years of, of just pushing like you said uh, now it's almost the finish line we've got people in um i guess what are you excited about going forward yeah Embarrassingly, I don't do much right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the team is so good and everybody's moving so well. I really don't do much. Yeah, I I, f I find stuff to do because I don't want to not do anything. I don't yeah. want I want to be useful, but I look up and I go, they're better operate. I got great operators. You know, I got any management in here. I've got a Peachy. I've got Corey Hospitality. I've got you just you got really strong people. So really, I just kind of get to sit back now and enjoy. Uh, watching the team meld and people come in enjoying it. That's yeah. fun for me, seeing my friends and other people walk in the building, especially for the first time. Uh, you know, approachable was the word I threw out early at the team. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't want this to be a special place that I only come occasionally. You want it to be a place, Oklahoma City's living room, as I said, I said that somewhere and don't remember it, and it got kind of picked up and mm -hmm. people started using it. and. 
you, you, you want it to be a, a regular stop. You just want it to be a place that people are comfortable, uh, that it doesn't feel intimidating, that if I'm in flip-flops and a T-shirt, sure, I go to First National. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not intimidated by it. Yeah, I'm going to rest a while. You know, I'm, <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying that yeah. for the last couple of weeks, getting to watch the team operate, and I don't have to do much. Uh, don't know what's next. Yeah. You know, I'm in the one of the best cities in the country and only getting bigger and faster and great leadership, and I've got friends that are doing incredible things, and I don't know. Uh, God gave me this vision, and I'm sure he'll give me the next one. He hadn't done that yet. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking some time out um, to share some stories. I know there's a million more, um, but I want to encourage people to come down here and see it for themselves because it, it is fascinating. And once you jump on that elevator, you know, the, the stairs coming up, um, the escalator stairs and, and kind of just that is probably one of the best entrances into a space, right? Like, because when you walk in the front door, you're just like, oh, it's just like, cool. This is, And then you go up the escalator cool. and you're like, I have arrived, you know, and you see it. Um, come have a drink, you know, come spend the night. Uh, if you feel inclined to want to live down here, then, then the, the girls at the leasing office will, will definitely have an appointment with you because uh, they, they were great to me earlier. We had a good chat, so I want to thank them for their hospitality as well. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I'm sure people have told you so many times, you know, thank you for, for giving it a go, right, continuing to push, seeing your vision, not giving up. And, you know, I think regret is one of the strongest things that, that we probably battle as we get older, and I don't think you're going to regret not giving this a go. So, You would have always wondered. Yeah. But, you know, the city got behind it, people got behind it, and I, I've got a little table in the corner I kind of hide just sometimes I can watch people come up that escalator for that yeah. first time. and It's fun. It's, it's fun to get to see people enjoy something new that maybe they haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for creating, I guess, Oklahoma City's living room mm. because it is, uh, it's a great place to meet and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of business done there, a lot of friendships made, a um, lot of drinks, cheers, um, a lot we of hangovers need, the next day. Yeah, we need a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. We, need, <laughs> we, need, we need a lot of support from, from uh, people coming yeah. in, certainly. Awesome. So for people listening, I'll put the link to the website in the description and we will catch you next episode. Cheers. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling Oklahoma stories through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, Follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.